How are we doing today? It's so good to see you again. I missed you guys on Monday. Um, if you haven't recognized, some really cool things are going on this week. It's a little bit different than we've done in the past. My name is Steve, and we welcome you to the zoo's education. We're so happy to have you guys here today. Um, before you get started, I'm a little underdressed. Check this out. Not done yet. Ready? Come here. Come here. Do, 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 do. Guess what it is? It's the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. That's why on Monday they made those really cool seed pod, pollination pods. I hope you guys made some. I made one and I'm going to put mine out in a little bit. Today we're talking about gopher frogs and today is Earth Day. It's actually the day, which is really cool. So we're a little doo, doo, doo. No? All right. Well, you know what it is. It is. It is Earth Day. We want to make sure you guys are knowing Earth Day came about 50 years ago. And it's all about action. They're trying to get people, you and me, interested and aware of what's going on in the environment today. So it's really, really that's important for all of us to be aware of. Anything we can do, right, to help our Mother Earth is good for all of us. It's for the planet itself. And that's why it's called, for the AZA, the American Zoological Association, and all of the zoos associated with it, is a wonderful party for the planet. And I did make one of those seed pods, one of those pollination pods. I hope you get, did too. And remember at the end, you're supposed to pitch it. That's what's on the video. Pitch it out. Ready? I have one. I gotta get back. I got one. Ready? Here we go. I love this. Ready? I'm ready. You ready? Okay. Oh, uh, um, Steve. That was a strike. I, I think pitch was like, you know, a descripting word. I don't think you had to pitch it. Like, I know you were in the College World Series in like 1948. No, 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 no. 19, couple years, 1986. When we won it all, thank you. I think a, I think a better way for kids to do is maybe a nice toss into the yard. More kind of. Like there that. you go. Yeah, yeah. It's safer that way. Sorry, guys. All right. So it's got a little carried away there with the pitch. I saw the word pitch. I had to pitch. Anyway, come on over here. One of the things we're going to do is talk to you today, today about frogs and the gopher frog in particular, which is really an important animal. The North Carolina Zoo is very active in conserving the gopher frog. And in conserving it, for saving it in the wild, we have a really, really cool program. It's called Head Starting. And you might have kind of caught that earlier where we had to head start. I've got to have a head start to win a race. I'm not winning any races these days. Um, but for the gopher frogs, and for a couple other animals, but the gopher frog primarily here at the North Carolina Zoo is an animal that we're head starting giving it an advantage, putting it ahead of something else. Check this out. I have some pictures, and I do have a gopher frog to share with you in a little bit. But I wanted to show you this, and I'll show you what the adult frogs look like. Check that out. So our team, Dustin Smith, Chris Shep, Audrey Williams, a lot of other folks, go out and they collect parts of egg masses from the sand hills of North Carolina. Not the entire egg mass, you don't wanna take everything. So they take some of that egg mass and these are gopher frog eggs. They bring them back to the zoo. That's the head start. In the wild, only about 5% of eggs make it to adulthood. So if that's a hundred, that might be around a hundred eggs only five become adults. At the zoo, we're able to head start them, give them a head start. So the tadpoles, these are our gopher frog tadpoles, are raised at the zoo. They're grown up here at the zoo in a very safe location. So those are the tadpoles, and that's the location that they grow up in. I, I move things on Wendy. Oops. It's upside down. It's upside down. 
can't let you see the other picture yet. We, we do let them live right side up at the zoo. <laughs> there we go. So there you go. So in these, those are called, fancy science word, those are mesocosms. So Miss Willem's class in Pensacola, Florida, looks like OJ Sims or Semis, I don't know how to pronounce it. We are so excited you guys tuned in. So having this happen, these mesocosms, which are habitats at the zoo, lets the tadpoles grow up safely. So we're able to put the tadpoles, you put the eggs in here, they, ready, they grow up into tadpoles. Then they become these little almost metamorphs, all, not metamorphs, almost these changes in the animal. So you, now you begin to see the frogs going through their metamorphosis. There's a science, it's a science word for you. Frogs going through their metamorphosis. They grow those, they grow those legs. They still have the tail, but the tail's being absorbed, being taken back up into the body. So through this metamorphosis from egg, tadpole to froglet, you begin to see this wonderful change. All of this happening, happening in those mesocosms, in those safe environments for the eggs to grow up in. We have a question. Yeah, Wendy, what you got? We had a good question, uh, I think from James. James was asking, he's been to the zoo, but he's never seen the mesocosms. Where are they? Great question. They're not on a place, not somewhere you can see them um, because we're trying to make a very secure, safe environment. Um, so they're in an off habitat space at the zoo. We're able to control everything about it that way. So that's one thing. Now you can see during the right season and when we're open, you can see adult gopher frogs in our cypress swamp habitat. You can see them down there, but for the other ones, you can't. So we've gone from this, right? They grow up into froglets, into small frogs. And then check this out. This is an adult frog with a transmitter. We actually track, we radio track some of the frogs. So this is an adult gopher frog that's been released into the sand hills those longleaf pine forests of North Carolina. So that's an adult with that transmitter. And you're gonna see, these guys are not very big. So this transmitter belt is not very big. So, but they're doing this to track where the animals are going. Got a question. Why do only 5% grow up? Let's think about that. If I'm an egg, why do, why do only 5% grow up? If I'm an egg, do I have any defenses? Maybe, maybe mom was able to kind of hide me in my egg mass. I don't have any defenses. I'm defenseless against predators, even against uh, a drought, something like that. So as you get older to, as a frog gets older, even as a tadpole, not a whole lot of defenses. It's not until you become that adult that I can maybe get away. I can camouflage, oops, sorry for that. I can camouflage and hide. So how do we, so where do we do this? We have this going on, growing them up and releasing them. Here's an image of Chris Shupp. Chris is one of our animal management supervisors here, animal management supervisors. We've got to slow down every once in a while. And he's releasing some of the frogs. We release the frogs, the froglets, back where they were found. Right? We don't want to just go put them somewhere randomly. We put them back where the egg mass was collected from. So that's Chris. And here's a nice image of Dustin. Dustin Smith is our curator of herpetology and a lot of other things here at the zoo. He's releasing a frog in those sand hills environments. Over 800 have been released already. That's such an exciting thing to know that that's your North Carolina Zoo doing something in the natural habitat, right? That's where the eggs are. So we're going to the natural space. We're able to collect a percentage, a portion of those eggs, bring them back to the zoo, raise them up, head start them, give them a head start to survival at the zoo in that very self, that very safe spot in those mesocosms till they're froglets so they're ready to be released and then take them back and release them 
where they were collected to maintain that population. And we're going to talk about why this is important in a little bit. So the zoo has already done over 800 froglets being released back in the sand hills of North Carolina. Thank you guys very much, Chris and Dustin, Audrey, and a lot of our partners as well. You can find out some of the information on the zoo's website. You can look for that project and other projects like it, nczoo.org, and see some of the conservation efforts that are going on. All right, you guys want to see the frog? It's kind of cool. You guys want to see the frogs? Ah, here we go. Oh, yes. So uh, apparently somebody said yes, because at least Wendy nodded yes. I think that was a nod, yes. Before I get started, we do have people answering your questions as always. Today, I believe it's Kathy, um, Rich, and maybe Beth. And so Bob, thank you guys. Bob oh, and too. Bob's on there too. So thank you guys very much. Kathy, we are at your, we are at your favorite place, Kid Zone. Now, I'm not bringing the animals out. Can you get them a pretty good shot, Wendy? Yeah. Because of COVID-19, we're trying not to get too much handling of our animals. We don't know if they could, if they could be transmitted. We know it has, wasn't the one tiger, um, but we don't want to take any chances. So we're going to keep them in this habitat box. But you can see we have the two. And you can see how little they are. How small are they? I'll put my finger up here so you guys can see. They're not very big. And remember, they're wearing that transmitter belt. That's so cool. You tell me what you need me to do, Wendy, and I will do it. Or That's you can okay. just move. They're just stay there. They're all righty. Uh... So the habitat we mentioned in the wild, in, the, in their natural space, uh, the pine hills, the pine, longleaf pine forests, typically associated with water, as you might imagine. They are a frog species, different from a toad. They are a frog. They have those long jumping legs. Toad's legs are a little bit smaller, a little bit stronger, more for hopping or walking. You guys know what they eat. What do frogs eat? I got a question to follow up with that too. Frogs eat berries? No. Leaves? No. Nuts? No. These are meat. Or these guys are eating insects and bugs and grubs. Does that make them carnivores? Are insects and bugs carnivores? They are meat, right? So yeah, they're a meat eater. I think people forget that bugs and earthworms and things like that are meat. So animals that eat those things are carnivores. I think that's kind of cool. The Carolina gopher frog is a threatened species in North Carolina. There's not very many. That's one of the main reasons that the zoo is active in saving these guys in their natural spaces. It's a threatened species. What's threatening them? Well, same thing as threatening a lot of animals. And I'm sure you guys, if you thought about it for heartbeat, you could think about it. Habitat loss. So they are losing that longleaf pine habitat. They're losing that aquatic, that water space. That's where the breeding is going on. Or the habitat just breaking down. And believe it or not, when we control or suppress or reduce fire in their habitat, they actually need fire to survive. What? No, 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 wait. This is a frog. How does it rely on fire? How can a, why would a frog depend on fire oh remember they're found in those longleaf pine habitats any water that's available becomes a breeding site if that water gets taken up by huge trees big trees if the water is shaded out and can't stay in ponds or puddles pools these guys have nowhere left to breed. So fire comes through, reduces the plant cover, reduces that hardwood cover that's out there, allowing those ponds, those pools to exist for these guys and a lot of other animals to survive. So fire for many animals is vital for survival because it's providing or creating habitat.
How strange that fire is a good thing. I think it's cool. They live in... That's my face. Hi, everyone. Hey, that's Wendy. Everybody say hi to Wendy. <laughs> hey, Wendy. Now you know what Wendy looks like. Big Cam fingers, little <laughs> camera. <laughs> Gotta love live. Gotta love it. <laughs> so the Carolina go frog. They hang out in North Carolina. They're found in other places too, especially south of us. But in North Carolina, they'll hang out in tree stumps. So broken down tree stumps in those pine forests, those longleaf pine forests make wonderful hiding places. South of us, South Carolina, Georgia, other places like that, you'll see them in burrows of other animals. You'll see it here too, but they'll hang out in gopher tortoise burrows. Gopher, they'll hang out under the ground where it's moist, where it's secure and safe. They're hard to find because of that and that magnificent camouflage ability to hide in the burrows and in those tree stumps. Wendy, what you got? Uh, Rick Disher was asking if uh, there is purposeful fire set by agencies to help the gopher frog. Great question, Rick. I appreciate that. Um, absolutely there are. They are controlled burns. You may actually hear those announcements sometimes. There's a controlled burn along Highway 40 or something like that, where they're reducing that uh, amount of material that's available to burn. So if I can burn it in a controlled setting, my radio went off, I'm gonna turn my radio off. If you can reduce it in a controlled setting, where you have people there putting a fire, you have people there that can put it out, then you betcha that happens a lot. We actually do, get this, at the North Carolina Zoo, we do controlled burns in some of our spaces. How about that? So the zoo is actually practicing that form of habitat um, security, habitat mitigation, which is nice. They're doing that kind of work at the zoo. I want to talk to you a little bit about another need these guys have. Carolina gopher frogs. By the way, their names, Biggie and Smalls. So you've met Biggie and Smalls. Wonder which one is which. A little quick shout out to Natalie and Amy taking care of our animal ambassadors. Hannah and April as well taking care of our animal ambassadors. Natalie and Amy got us all set up with Biggie and Smalls today. So thank you guys very much. I want to talk to you a little bit about water, just for a heartbeat. Remember, this Earth Day. This is Earth Day, 50th anniversary of Earth Day. So we're kind of celebrating all week. On Monday, we did those pollination pods, another one way to create something. Today, we showed you Party for the Planet, we introduced you to Earth Day and the frogs. But water is really important, and clean, safe water is really, really important to these guys. So what we need you guys to do is keep that water safe and secure. And little things can make a difference. This is something that um, our neighborhood naturalist, Bob, he talks about a lot. Look at this thing that he helped create. Look at this. This was collected in a park over 90 minutes. That's it. Those are cigarette butts. This is a five gallon jug. And one cigarette butt can contaminate, can poison one to 10 gallons of water at a time. One cigarette butt has all the chemicals found in that cigarette butt. So it makes its way to the water system and stays there. A big problem. So we can dispose of these properly. That's one huge way to help, keeping the littering down. And what about plastics? You guys may have thought it was a decoration, but over here on the table was this jar. Plastics are a big problem. I know you guys have heard it. Microplastics, fancy science word, micro, small, are five millimeters or less. So centimeter, five millimeters, half a centimeter or less. And look at this, it looks like sand. How, how good are you, Wendy? It's there. All right. 
That is not sand, guys. That's plastic. And every time we casually throw a bottle away, we don't recycle it. It escapes from the back of our truck. We don't remember and it blows away at the picnic and it begins to break down. That's what happens. And if you're a bird, if you're an animal that eats small animals, that might look like food, huh? And you can see that sand looking material at the bottom there. So that's why we make sure constantly telling you guys, be aware, recycle when you can, or dispose of properly all the time. I mentioned that this is one of the reasons that we're doing the, the Carolina gopher frog, right? Frogs in general are indicator species. They indicate something about their environment. They indicate something about their habitat. So imagine that they're not around anymore, right? If there's too much of that poison, that, that toxin in the water, and the Carolina gopher frog can't grow. If the habitats are being destroyed or changed in ways that is not suitable for their growth. One thing we're gonna lose is this. I need a little bit of help. Come the glasses again. I love somebody's last time said, where'd Steve go? So I'm on my phone. I've gone to, thanks Maria. I've gone to Herps of North Carolina, Amphibians, Reptiles of North Carolina. So this is on the phone. So that's a picture of the gopher frog. Some really cool information about gopher frogs. We have similar stuff on the website, on the North Carolina Zoo website. But down here is the call. And I want you to hear this, and I'm gonna be quiet, which is shocking for some of you. Listen. I'll do it this way. <laughs> so you can see something better than the back of the front camera. This speed. So without the gopher frog, that call goes away. The spring peepers go away. Those animals that are indicating something about our environment, the, their presence tells us something about the environment. Having them there is a positive indicator. And when they're gone, when we don't see them as often, then we have that little bit of a negative indicator to the habitat space itself. Something that a lot of people are engaged with around this are, are volunteers. Whoop, whoop. A lot of volunteers are helping out in so many ways. And guys, we miss you at the zoo. We miss our volunteers at the North Carolina Zoo. A big shout out to the North Carolina Zoo Volunteers. It is National Volunteer Week. So a big shout out to our North Carolina Zoo Volunteers and any of you that are volunteering your precious time with an organization near and dear to your heart. We truly appreciate all of that time. But for our volunteers at the North Carolina Zoo, we do miss you. We cannot wait to see you again. And we will see you again. And we know it'll happen but not soon enough, right? We do appreciate you guys. We love our volunteers. And all of you guys are tuning in. We volunteer and we appreciate you guys as well. All about Earth Day. All about Earth Week. Go for frogs. We have a couple crafts to share with you. I'll tell you what, Nikki working hard on these crafts, huh? And these are special crafts, Steve. These are special crafts? Yes, because when we talk about reducing plastic in our right. homes, yep, sure. this is a perfect way to reduce plastic. I didn't even put that together. Yep, wait till you see. Nice. Let's go with these ones in the back first. Check this out. Ha! Ah. If you go to the North Carolina Zoo's Facebook page, navigate through Adventures in Education, you'll find the write-ups for these. So the Zoo's Facebook page, Adventures in Zoo Education, in Education, sorry, you'll find the crafts. Now these, check it out. It's a two liter bottle that was cut and then simply decorated. Top half can be recycled. You draw a pattern on here, cut out the pattern, and you create the, the little frog and rabbit. How cool would that be with some flowers in it maybe at Easter? I think it's kind of cool. So that craft is on that, that Facebook page. Thank you very much, Nikki. And near and dear to some of your hearts, 
How about a sea turtle? With the bottom of one of those, decorated with yarn. Could have been drawn or painted, right? A little Google eyes, gotta love Google eyes. Who doesn't love a Google eye? So that's a sea turtle. Notice the flippers there. Nice job on the flippers. Or how about a turtle? I've got to get down, got to get down a little bit. Becomes a craft, becomes music. That's a little turtle with some beads inside. You guys can make that. You could put rocks, sure. shells from yeah, your last trip like to the beach. Can you imagine? Yeah, recycle, we're using, we're repurposing. Keeping it natural. How about that? I like that. So getting down a little bit. Maybe you guys can make a band, have an instrument going on. Music, very important in today's world, especially nowadays with the coronavirus going on. So another little fun craft. Thank you very much for giving me. So there you go. Earth Day this year, right now, Wednesday, the 22nd, 50th anniversary. Monday, we did pollination pods. If you didn't see the video, go check it out because it's kind of neat. It's very simple. It creates a little pod, has seeds in it, and you just toss it out. Boom. You've got seeds planted. We learned about gopher frogs today. We had yesterday, we had Untamed Science with their video. We saw some today, learned about them a little bit. Um, we have on Friday, Leslie is coming back. Leslie's going to be with us on, Mon on Friday. She's going to come talk about a really cool trip she took to a really far north place to see a very special type of animal. She's going to tell you about her trip, what she learned, the culture of the area, and just some really neat things that she uncovered on her trip. I'm not going to tell you where it was. I've been there. I was lucky enough to go too, but she'll be there. Wendy and I will be online answering your questions that day. So sometimes Leslie answers our questions. Other people, Wendy and I will be live with you typing in our answers to the questions. So we're really excited about that as well. I hope you learned about something today. Hope you learned about the frogs, learned about something. That was kind of silly. You learned about the gopher frogs. You learned about things you can do, uh, a couple things, activities you can take part in. You learned about Earth Day and the importance of Earth Day and the fact that college I went to went to the World Series 1986 and, and, and won it all. So that was your fault. Why don't you give your college a shout out? Marietta College. Woo -hoo! Gotta love it. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in. It's so happy to see you guys as we, as we can. We'll go back and check out some really cool pictures and really cool questions you guys might have. Remember to stay safe. We're here for you. Stay home, stay secure, stay safe. That's the best way we'll get through all of this and get us reopened again so we can visit with you here on ground. Thanks again. Stay safe. We'll see you soon, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Bye, guys.